Well, thank you for joining us for another Gold Seek Radio Gold Nugget segment. Today's special guest, Gerald Salente from the Trends Research Institute. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome back to the program Gerald Salente from the Trends Research Institute. Good afternoon, Gerald. Good afternoon, Chris. You know, let's begin with your latest Trends Journal report. Your journal predicted the panic of 08, the collapse of 09. Both came to pass. Well, since then, the government propped up the market with a $2 trillion emergency bailout plan, and you're now calling for crash of 2010. We said from the very beginning with the TARP bailouts, that the bailout bubble would burst, that this would only last for so long. The so long is now over. It's over in China. It's over in India. The so long is over in all of Europe. The banks, of course, the central banks pledged they would never buy up bad paper from the banks, and they're buying it up. And so there's just one after another. There, We just heard again from the Federal Reserve that they were going to, I love the language they use, Fed to reinvest principal on mortgage proceeds to counter slowing economy. Now that's white shoe boys jive to steal your money to give to the Wall Street gang. And so, no, there's, there's the crash of 2010 is underway. We're watching the markets continue to go down. And as you well know, we believe gold is going to go way up. Well, you know, I'd like to discuss another theme you see on the horizon, and that's technology for the lower income sector of society. You know, with unemployment near 10%, you expect millions of unemployed to purchase low-cost technology, and this could present big opportunities for uh, sharp entrepreneurs out there. And that's the thing to always remember, that there are plenty of opportunities out there. And yes, this technology for the poor is a huge trend. For example, over in India... Well, you know, you have you have half the population living on less than two dollars a day, and so what they're doing is they're making stoves and they're making uh, heating units and water filtration systems using the highest of high technology and 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 refrigeration that costs you know very very little money and built to scale for what they need, and this is really what the future is. But the United States doesn't seem to understand that. For example, let's look again. We just went through a crisis not more than a few years ago of gasoline prices going through the roof. Now that they've moderated, guess what the big sellers are again? Big SUVs and pickup trucks. Whether it's too big to fail or buying houses that are too big or cars that are too big, you're going in the wrong direction. The direction to go into is less is more. It's the oldest axiom in architecture and art, and it's the true. it could not be truer in today's environment. Because we're going to see this is going to be the age of the entrepreneur, because the corporations are going to continue to slash, continue to pay low wages, and those that are going to succeed are going to go out on their own. Now, I just, I just uh, finished a, a trip around the uh, parts of the Northeast, and going to old cities on purpose that were really big during the the heyday of the Industrial Revolution and the building of America that are now in disrepair. There's so much opportunity there. For these young people that are living home with mommy and daddy after graduating college, and they're hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and the parents are paying for their cell phone bills and room and board, and let them become the entrepreneurs of tomorrow, and you could refurbish and rejuvenate these cities with architecture and building that's far superior than the garbage that they've been building now. And and so there's a lot of opportunities, and yes, it's it's that it's not only low cost, it's quality at low price points. Those are also the considerations, because when they're making this low-tech product, or this, excuse me, this high technology for the poor, it's the highest of high tech. They're using the innovations for building power plants that they're now using to build a small stove or refrigerator. I recall several years ago hearing how China had actually leaped forward ahead of many other of the uh, developing nations simply because they hadn't invested in the massive telephone and cable infrastructure that we were forced to invest in. They simply went to 
higher tech cell phone technology to offer practically the entire populace telephone access for just merely pennies on the dollar. In in sort of a similar vein, you know, these advances in high technology will allow entrepreneurs significant profits, and that's going to help save the uh, domestic economy. That's it, and and that's what we have to do. We have to save the domestic economy, and the only way you do that is by buying among each other. We cannot continue to support other countries as we go down. They turned us into a service sector society, and they sold the big lie of great jobs and service, no more dirty jobs in manufacturing. Chris, think of the word service sector, servitude, servant, Mm -hmm. surf. We went from a country of craftspeople, tradesmen, merchants, merchants, to a country now where we're cashiers and and shelf stockers and clerks. If we look at the other side of the uh, the ledger, Walmart caught a lot of flack lately from folks who claim that the uh, local economies are suffering terribly. The mom and pop businesses, hardware stores and retailers and jewelers and things like that. If the consumer can get that product for pennies on the dollar, how are we going to put that genie back in the bottle? Go Walmart. back to why the Walmarts didn't ex- exist before. I remember as a young man and going to college my first year in 1965, learning about such things as the robertson Patman Act, the Sherman Antitrust Act. It was so that the big guys couldn't rob the rest of us blind, and that you couldn't buy on huge quantity and get a huge discount. They give you a discount for shipping, but you weren't better than anybody else. So what it did is it tilted it's the playing field to these to the to the people that are the big financiers that could put everybody else out of business. The only way this country comes back, as I said, is when we become a nation of merchants and manufacturers, of craftspeople and tradesmen, not of serfs, servants and servitude. Hey, you want a great job as a home health aide? I got one waiting for you.